Hey folks, I'm Phil and welcome back to your Europa Universalis 4 with the Antebellum playthrough. We are North Denmark, we are at war with our nemesis Francia, but we have created a coalition of the willing to beat up this nasty uh, pre-France uh, people. Controller of the Holy Roman Empire. Just all around and not nice people. And we are working on eliminating them. I mean, they are currently getting absolutely raffle stomped in their own territory. I will absolutely love to see. Let's check the thing here. They're down to 38,000 infantry and only 9,000 horse and 7,000 cannon. As you can see, our number is considerably higher. None of my allies are upset. Danzig wants out. Francia is still okay, but not doing wonderful. We're just taking back a fort they took from us. Then we're going to start taking over uh, England here. Take out that uh, port in Hamcompte. Ham Compt. I don't know what that means, but sure. Let's grab the mercenaries and have them come down there and start that siege. I just want to double check that there isn't anything going on there. Good. I'm going to split you guys up again into probably four stacks. It's easier to manage, and I'll have one of you go here. One of you go... Nope. Picked up two stacks again. Oxford. London. Sussex. Can you get to Sussex? You can. Our friends in Wessex will join us at the end of the war as an ally, and I'm going to turn them into a vassal. I may also turn Wales into a vassal. Uh, we're going to have to start eliminating a couple of um, our alliances. Valetti will be one of them that we're going to get rid of. And possibly the Magyars. Let's see. I may just go slightly over for a period of time. Undecided at this point. I am not too worried about the fleet, so I'm going to... I'm just gonna hold off. This will this will get this done. It's fine. Conversion is done. Got to fight a bunch of stuff. Can you reach over here? Here. You can reach here though. As can you. Let's collect some troops together here. Maybe I'll move them over to the uh, continent. Minute. Oh, my mercenaries take up this. Got a big stack here, which is doing some work. Is that one down? Generally, I think we're okay. Making money now. Good. But Northumbria is back. Bring you down here. This will sail over this way. And maybe I'll stand right here and take on this one. Adiwa. That's how you pronounce that. Maybe wrong. Salt crisis. Just like that. Get over here. Please and thank you. There's a 32 stack floating around, which I'm not particularly pleased at seeing. I really do wish these guys would better organize. Why are you not crossing? Waiting for three cogs. Is that my new world fleet? I bet you it is. Hilarious. Right. This is farmland, right? Grassland? Yeah, we're pretty safe here. New world beckons. Uh, I don't need a conquistador. That's better. And gain a new level of 
diplomatic technology, which I think would be good. I guess we're way behind. It helps out. They gonna bring crossing penalty on. They might. I do have a leader here. He isn't wonderful. He's okay. He's a two two four. You are a four three three. Let's see if the crossing penalty is applied. Maybe they can reinforce in time. I'm going to think they might not. Where are you gonna land? Ten days. I don't think you're gonna make it, and I don't think it's gonna matter. I'm gonna stop. You can't stop. So. Where did that army go? Did that army just get yeeted? It did. That's really unfortunate. And that kind of annoys me that it did. Francia, you're still high. Okay. Um, this fight, I think, is probably over. Probably just going to get annihilated. Yeah. We need to rebuild an army. I don't think I have one at all now. Well, let's start over here. Uh, we'll go template. Find a template. We'll create one. Let's create... Uh, Ten, two, 17 right now, so I could do like 15, 17 would be 5. Sounds pretty good to start. Hey there, this is a bit of post-commentary because apparently my mic turned off at some point during this uh, recording quite early on, which is unfortunate, so I'm going to do some post-commentary here to fill in uh, my own comments on here. I'm going to take a few loans um, here to clean up the economy and uh, purchase some mercenaries, as well as purchase the uh, new unit, a new template there, I created a 10 5 which will probably be the new standard template uh, going forward. It combines nicely uh, to create a larger uh, group later on. And we're going to work on uh, finishing this war with Francia and Danzig and others uh, to hopefully cut down Francia to size, as well as um, Getting maybe Danzig, something out of Danzig. And we got a great trade on our king here, giving us bonus to settlers, which is amazing since we're the first colonizer of the New World. Uh, it's going to be super helpful on that particular part of our tree. Now our allies in the south appear to not be doing too much. We hope that they're going to do more in distracting Francia, or at least doing uh, stuff to them going forward. Um, but uh, we'll team up here uh, with uh, our troops, our allied troops, once we get... Um, that new stack built. Uh, we're slowly taking back the uh, the English territories. Um, just gotta eliminate that one fort in southern England there that's owned by Francia. Uh, we'll see what we can do. You can see our troops coming together here in Norge Island. And our mercenary group there does have low manpower, but they're still useful now. They have a bit of manpower left. Um, I should look at that in a minute. Uh, we'll get that all done as well. We're going to bump up the stack we made to be a little bit stronger, or a little suffering on morale, but that's okay. Uh, it'll be fine. Just want to be strong enough that we just can't get immediately stack wiped as we're wandering around the map. Uh, of course, I'll put our leader in charge. I got two leaders here. One of them is much better than the other, the Peter Pedersen there. Is much better. We'll stick them in charge, and then we'll head down once we get these uh, last uh, infantry built uh, to support the allies in uh, defeating Francia. 
Um, we're getting some missionary work done. Our colonies are coming along. We have one core left on Holstein that we need to get done so that we can avoid the imperial decree to return the territory. Um, and it's part of our mission tree anyhow to get that done, as well as getting Hamburg um, from the Hansa. Uh, so we'll look into that, and Lubeck, actually, from Lubeck. Uh, so we'll look into getting that in maybe a future episode, but not this one. It was too much AE to get done uh, this early on. I didn't want all of Europe to turn against us uh, immediately, especially when we're on such low manpower. i have taken that fort in England. We'll just have these troops take these remaining um, provinces in the UK, and then we'll move our new stack down to help support my allies in northeast uh, France here. Grab a couple of these border provinces, which don't have a fort next to it, but they do have forts in sort of a, a row along here, including Paris. Um, so we'll have to uh, look to doing that. Oh, a little uh, stack of Francians showed up, but they thought that our combined forces were too strong. We'll have to deal with them shortly. Head over to Devon here to take that territory and get that lost while our fleet maintains control over the English Channel. Uh, continuously providing um, war exhaustion to Francia having blockaded ports. Now we could take the next uh, thing. We're going to take retired advisors, giving us morale of navies, as well as bumping up the next uh, thing, giving morale of navies and ship disengagement cost, as well as moving along that uh, new uh, tree for antebellum, the new um, idea tree. A lot of ships here. Uh, we probably don't need them all teamed up anymore. Uh, but the guarding that English Channel is important, and look at Andalusia as they are being a borough and helping us um, guard the isles as well. I'm going to split the fleet and move it down to uh, into the the bay there, uh, Bay of Biscay, I think it's called, um, the, the larger area. But we'll just go there and we'll blockade some more important ports for Francia while we're sitting around. It's not much more exploring for our explorer to do at the moment, not until we get some more stuff done. But uh, for right now, it's going to help us out uh, with maintaining our fleets and getting a good admiral in charge of those fleets. So we'll move around. You can see the Francians are back again, trying to uh, cause some trouble, but they're a little scared of our combined forces up here. We will take advantage of this two stack, which for some reason is moving on its own into this territory. We'll wipe that out, relieve them of those cannons and single infantry. Another win against Francia for Norse Denmark. Francia, oh, it's 64k manpower. It's still pretty good, uh, but they are lower on troops than um, normal, than what they have been in the past. And so they are slowly being ground down. If you look at the bottom right of the screen, you can see a couple of armies there. Francia, uh, 40k and a 17k moving around. We'll finish taking the Isles. But uh, we got to be careful about these uh, troops all wandering around or we're going to get absolutely bamboozled by them again. Andalusia and Bohemia are in the south here, slowly eating up some of southern uh, France or Francia, uh, but uh, doing it not very efficiently and certainly not supporting each other. Uh, the colonies will be get done soon, and once that's done, our economy should get better, and we're meeting that... Um, um, that diet requirement that wants us to build in uh, Vest uh, uh, Bygden now on Greenland to finish off Greenland. We'll get that done pretty soon because that's where our colonist is. Providing that constant uh, chance to add more colonists as time goes on. Here we're getting attacked by the Francians. Hopefully we can make it out. We Looks like we cannot because we are going to leave on uh, the 23rd, and they're going to arrive on the 20th, which is not nearly fast enough for us to leave. So we'll sit here and do the best we can. But this is a fight that we're not going to win because they have 40,000 there and another 17 coming on, or almost 40,000. Uh, so we're going to have to look to retreat from that once again. Um, probably bring our mercenaries here as over, which is what I'm talking about, uh, and meet up in Jailen there. Um, to sort of have a combined force, because the uh, the British Isles are basically done, and there's no way the Francians can get troop back there. The Andalusians are coming up our way, but I don't know if they'll be there quick enough. The Bohemians are just slowly taking territory in the south. As you can see, the war exhaustion is pretty, not the war exhaustion, the war enthusiasm is pretty low. 
uh, for um, Danzig, who's been occupied for a while now. Uh, but Francia is not quite ready to leave. Now, if we look at Francia, we have 31% war score, and we're going to explore um, options into taking land from them, because I don't need to take them to 100% necessarily. If we just take money, we get 21k, uh, or 2100, I should say, which is a, just a nice amount of money, but it's not enough, uh, as I'm talking about here. Um, if I do go for war wraps and, uh, and money, um, we get less money in that situation, but we do get the continuous income, but it's not enough. We need to hurt Francia, and hurting Francia is continuing this war, draining their manpower, and maybe taking a little territory up in England, like I'm showing there, because um, we do need a bunch of that stuff for missions. Getting Essex and London would be light, nice. Even Oxford would be kind of cool. They're not going to give me Oxford, but not too, too far away. And it creates a little bit of a coalition because Francia is not co-belligerated in this war. And so there's an increased cost, but gaining these two only gets Mercia into a coalition, which is not a big problem for me. And Essex alone might be uh, interesting enough on as well. Now we could, I'm debating here um, in this whether I should peace out right now before the Francians ambush us uh, in uh, eastern France there, so we can preserve our manpower and our troops. So that is a fight we're not going to win. Um, and so if we do that, we take Essex, we can get basically no money, just Essex right now. And I'm debating right here whether it's worth it or not, and I come to the conclusion that it is not worth it, that we should continue through the war. We have strong allies who don't appear to be leaving the war anytime soon. Um, the only one who's on the fence is Bohemia here, as you can see, but we get a few battles in uh, and they'll be fine again. Francia is already on medium. They're already at 4.2 war exhaustion. Um, so that's going to continue to tick up and they're going to have, continue to have a problem. So we're going to stay here and then bounce out uh, once we can retreat from this battle. I think the Magyar's uh, troops will get caught in this battle as well, bumping up my numbers by another 10,000, but still it won't be enough to win this. Especially since Francia it looks like they have a really good leader there. And Thuringia is here too, of course, helping us out. I believe Thuringia is the... Um, the vassal of one of my allies. It might be Bohemia, it could be the Magyar's vassal. I think it might be the Magyar's vassal, but I'm not quite sure. So here goes the fight. It's 36 versus 30k, um, which uh, is already kind of iffy diffy, especially if they got a good leader. Um, but that other stack is coming in uh, to take us on, and I have no allies uh, nearby. So you can see there's another 17 coming in once I move my mouse again, and I have no allies coming by. I was a little confused there about Thuringia because I didn't realize that they were a vassal of someone else and that they were in the war. I just figured that out right there. So here we go. Uh, we'll get out on uh, 12 days from now. We'll be able to retreat on November 1st, which is just one more day. There we go. And then I say, let's get the frig out of here. I try to retreat to uh, Kubenhaven, but because the um, morale bar is so low, you don't get to choose anymore. Um, and so I uh, retreat further into the German territories. Now we're talking about picking up the scythe. I think we said we'll leave it for right now because I have lots of capacity to hold it and I'm in no hurry to pick up that tech. It doesn't give me a huge advantage for picking it up. Uh, we will move our mercenaries over in a minute, which will be great. Here we go. So they are done. Uh, they still have uh, 1,200 manpower, which is not a lot. Um, so I decide to get rid of them here and just hire a new stack. Or did I get rid of them here? Apparently not. Oh, I'm talking about, yeah. Now maybe I can declare war on Wales and gain that tech, uh, that territory from them while France is occupied. I could come up and declare war on Wales and um, take them out while I'm at war with Francia. Because Francia is the emperor and will defend an elector. Um, we'll see. But then I realize that uh, if I attack Wales, as we'll see in a minute, I still have a guarantee of independence and uh, something else going on there, um, which would make that not work. Was that gone already? Yeah, you see right there, the transfer of trade power. I have, I can't declare a war on a country I've guaranteed. And I cannot declare a war on an emperor, on a member of the, uh, the empire while I'm at war with the emperor. 
So all of those things prevented me from declaring war on Wales, which is unfortunate. So I go through here and I start revoking things because eventually I need to take Wales out because uh, I need all of Wales and uh, Cornwall to complete another mission. Basically need all the British Isles. Then we look at Wessex and declaring war on them and we decide that um, we could probably just make them a vassal and then vassal feed them back a large chunk of southern um, England. Nobody would really come to defend them except for Lotharingia. I don't think it's worth the time right now to spend that effort to declare war on Wessex. I'm going to look at Gaeldom for a little bit. Oh, sorry, Mercia a little bit. And again, I come to the same conclusion. Now is not the time. We do have some rebels there in uh, Holstein, which are problematic, but uh, we'll deal with that in a minute. could also declare war on Lübeck, but... I really struggle with the AE I'm going to gather and the low manpower I have. And really, I want to concentrate on England and gain some of that stuff back to complete those missions. So here, I'm just uh, considering getting my troops out of the way from getting annihilated a second time. Thankfully, we're pretty fast, and so we do so without much effort. Um, and bring our troops up to uh, take on this rebel stack, which is just something to do. While we uh, collect our, our um, army here, we get rid of these uh, mercenaries because they're basically tapped out at this point. Uh, and we're going to hire a new stack of mercenaries. Uh, it's probably going to be the Free Company. We're talking about the White Company as a possibility. Or the Finnish Company, which look pretty cool. They're 18k and it's 7 a month, and we can sort of support that uh, right now, at least for a while. If we look at the other companies around here, the White Company is a little less money a month. Um, but has a really crappy leader. Let me talk about the Muskogee mercenaries. Um, they're a lower tech than us. You can see it's technology level 5 there because they're not in Europe. They're out in uh, North America, so we don't want to hire them. So I'm debating whether the Finnish company or the Free, Gar or the, uh, the free Swiss or the Free company. Can't hire that. White company's got a crappy leader. Finnish company's got a good leader, but they're kind of expensive. I think I ultimately decide going with the free company here. It's a, a 12k stack. It'll be good enough to support me in the short term. So we'll build it right there. Uh, and while our other stack refills its coffers. We still have administrative tech waiting for us. We'll get it eventually. We're not too worried about it. The rebels were successful up in Sweden, so we need to get those done. We'll send the mercenaries up there probably. We can put our other leader in charge and have them do it and take out that form. It's a good use of mercenary manpower while we recover our own manpower. That's right, if we don't use the manpower in a mercenary group and then disband them, that's a complete waste of the money if we've spent on them. So why not do so? Just waiting for the morale to tick up on our mercenaries before I pop in and take them out. Um, just need one more real tick there, so we'll start moving towards Stockholm. I thought about just uh, sieging that down, Stockholm, and then moving along, but um, at the moment I've, I've decided to actually stop the, uh, the rebels instead. So we're going to move my main stack down. I have the attach other armies onto it. They've got some of their troops there to take out. If I move a little bit closer, maybe I can convince some of the other armies to come with me. And specifically looking at the Andalusian 31 stack there, the 26 and the 5, uh, to come with me, but we'll see. Uh, we got an event here about the us and the Norwegian people. Uh, it's better for us to... He serves better as a local leader than as a Norwegian uh, subjects. I think it's a much better choice in that situation. We don't need the advisor slot right now. The advisor to go into the, the thing. This is where I decide that it's probably better for me to take out the rebels. I didn't stop them from going to Bergenslagen. I ended up just taking back Stockholm. I probably should have done it the other way in retrospect, because uh, that way you don't get the rebel sentiment for 10 years. 
but um, I was slow to make the change there on a decision. So we ended up just taking out uh, Stockholm instead. Now this uh, main stack is going to head down to France with some other people in charge. As you can see, uh, it looks like Finland is already on Paris trying to uh, siege it down unsuccessfully. They don't have a large enough stack, so we'll sneak in here. You can see they got a stack down there of uh, 21 and two ones to try and take back some of their southern lands. So at least some of their main stack is away. They have, probably have at least one more large stack floating around, but I'm just not quite sure. There's the Bergslagen um, rebels getting defeated, the Swedish rebels. So we'll just take back that territory and then bring the mercenaries down to help out in Francia. We do have a rebellion in Hull, we're just going to ignore it for now. Uh, because we'll have to deal with the UK after the war with Francia and Danzig. So you can see the Allies have really collected up here. We've got a uh, 15 stack from Andalusia, we got a 22 stack from uh, Bohemia here, we got uh, Finland here with a little 5 stack, my 20 stack. We're in a good spot here to defend ourselves as long as all of the AI uh, groups stay together. So let's bring down the mercenary group to help support and uh, hopefully we can take back some territory here. Certainly some forts would be nice. Uh, they're going to work on the fort in Lyonnais uh, and they're going to get attacked. I'm going to come down and support them because I'm standing right by them. And I think we could probably take out this Francian army. Uh, we sure can. Giving us a little bit of war score but more importantly bleeding more of their um, their um, manpower. Now we did get the call for peace in this war because we've been at war with them for so long. Um, that's a bit troublesome because we can't do a lot of damage to Francia, but we're going to let it sit here for a minute and build up a bit of war exhaustion while we continue to hammer on Francia to at least increase the, uh, the war score um, there to get better deal out of this in the end, right? Because what's all this fighting for in the first place? The fighting for is to get Holstein, but I also want to do damage to Francia because they're kind of a pain. So let's take a look at the... Uh, the Age of Discovery here, we can pick another uh, one of these. Uh, we're probably going to get transfer subject. I uh, take a look at Francia. Do they have any subjects? It doesn't look like they have any, so that is of no immediate value right now. Because this is something I could do is take one of the subjects. So I decided not to do that one. I could do raise war taxes, but the Age of Discovery is going to end soon. So I end up taking adaptive combat terrain instead. Because if we click on um, Kubenhaven over here, it's, uh, I believe, farmland. Uh, it is, and farmlands are all over. It's a sort of Western Europe thing, so it seems pretty good to get that bonus when fighting in farmlands. Yeah, here's where I realized that the call for peace is up, but we still got to finish this out. We got a 21% chance to take something, one fort, uh, and possibly we could take more than one fort. Definitely want to take the one in Lyonnais before we siege out, which just fell. So. We'll head up to uh, Paris to see if we can knock that one out. Maybe we can get the one up in uh, northern France there. I think that's Ames. I can't quite read the uh, the name of the province there. We'll take a look at the deal again and what we can get. Currently we got Essex selected. We could take London again. They don't want to give it to me. Would only produce one person in a coalition though. And they're a little bit far off for giving me Lon uh, both London and Essex. Uh, possibly because um, they look like they're making gains at the moment, although that's not entirely true. Uh, I looked at releasing nations. Right now I could release England, but it's not super helpful. Uh, Mercia does have cores all over the western side of uh, the southern UK here, uh, so if I don't take something like Oxford, for instance, then I, could, uh, I won't have a core territory of theirs in mine, and then I can take them as a vassal without any sort of concern. So I don't take Oxford in this particular uh, deal, although I could have in that uh, situation, because I do want to vassalize uh, Mercia, either um, forcefully or not. Now I looked at releasing some nations from them. Francia is not really interested in releasing nations. There's a couple of small nations I could release. They're just going to get eaten up anyhow. Um, it's possible I could take one, release one of the ones in uh, England, like Kent, and then gobble them up myself and once the truce is uh, satisfied, but uh, we won't do that. So I looked at just taking Essex and taking um, nearly 1600 gold to finish this war over here because of the ticking um, uh, call for peace. 
and war exhaustion, which is a pain in the butt. So that'll be done in a minute. I think I wait a minute longer to try and gain a bit more. I'm waffling here whether I should do it right now or whether I should push a little harder and be greedy. I think I end up deciding to be greedy. I do look at just taking things directly from Danzig because I have 100% war so score from them. I could take a lot, like all of Southeast England there, uh, and then the rest would be the Mercian territory. Um, the problem is I can't get any money from it. I can only get 30 bucks, and I really want the money to help uh, pay for buildings and other things going on, and I'm looking at that um, sound toll um, wonder that's in uh, Guggenhaven, which I need to upgrade anyhow for a mission, so we decided to just go with Francia instead um, as a better choice. So Francia, you're going to give me Essex, you're going to give me some money, but we're going to be a little greedy and go a bit longer uh, to see if I can grab another uh, spot. At least a couple more um, provinces here. Even the ones without forts in it will help push that up and over. I mean, Valois there is about to fall to Andalusia, which I've just taken. They've just taken. And we'll continue to push. The two uh, sieges down in the south here at the forts are both in the negative, so we have time to wait a little bit if we don't mind accruing that war exhaustion, which I don't for the moment. Now, there's a 20 stack attacking Finland in the north, which is unfortunate. I could go up and try and save them. Uh, I discovered that it's going to be quite the walk to do so, so I decide not to, and I just let Finland uh, die off there. No problem. I will move my mercenaries a little closer to help protect my main stack, but I don't mind this particular fight being a loss. Not much is going to happen. It looks like Andalusia is a bro and jumps in there and helps Finland, and my mercenaries come along, and I think we turn the tide because of it, and we do, and Finland is saved. It's more war score for us against Francia because we've defeated another one of their armies, which really helps out in this situation. So just taking a look at the, uh, the province up there and the speed of which things are going on. I just uh, want to sort of considering what uh, we can do next and how long we could wait. I think we can still wait a little bit longer. That Siege of Paris is so juicily close, and as is the one in the north there on that province that I can't remember the name next to Co. One of our colonies it does, in fact, it's Vester by uh, Biden. Vester Biden, I think that is, uh, which is finished, which should complete um, this colonial Greenland, colonize the Greenland area, giving me more stuff. Uh, if I click on it, it doesn't send me anywhere. There it is complete. Perfect. We get some more colonists per uh, tick, which is wonderful. Now I can take my colonists and send them back to uh, the Caribbean because I've got to start taking the Caribbean over, especially with Andalusia starting to colonize down there. Now back at the war with Francia. I swear this war will be over shortly. It looks like they've given up on one of the, uh, the fight, the forts in Labourde. Um, that's probably the army that came north to take on my guy. They did take the other one in the Pyrenees, which is unfortunate, but we got two forts there to their one fort up in the north, to their one fort they took back in the south, which is still a net um, plus, I think. We're both at 42. Sure, we can do this. I'm getting a little freaked out by the Francian forces coming up here and uh, making eyes at my armies. But I think we can manage to do it. We did lose our advisors. So let's pick another one. Nearly inflation sounds good for right now. I don't have a ton of inflation, but um, I don't want to pay for a big advisor right at this exact moment, especially since I'm just storing um, admin points. Good, we got one of the forts in the north. Uh, let's grab the other one at Paris, and we'll see what we can do. Our fleets uh, blew up the uh, Francian fleet who was sitting in that uh, fort. Um, province then. So that's good for that. It looks like Bohemia is going to get uh, um, beaten up in Finisterre in the end of um, uh, Brittany there. That's none of my doing. I'm just going to take Paris as soon as we can. Now Paris uh, <laughs> keeps failing its role. We're up to 78% now. And I'm complaining in this uh, audio that didn't get recorded that of course the AI manages to uh, win a role in 
whatever, 20%, but I have to go all the way up to multiple 78%. I'm also complaining that Andalusia, this 43 stack, could easily take on um, that 23 stack in Finisterre, uh, but decides to just ignore it and head south for no apparent reason. So the nobility's demand increased pensions here. We can lose some stability, or the nobles can gain some, uh, some power. I think we'll just let them be for now. And a helping hand. Um, We managed to take Paris. They're going to come attack me in Paris. I'm willing to take the fight, I believe, although I could just peace out instead, which is what I think I decide to do. We're up to 69%. Nice in um, our conquest here. We could take London as well and take 1,800 gold, which I think is good. We need two cities that are of 15 points or more, um, I think, to finish off um, the one of the trees in England there. So we decide to finish that with... Francia. No problem. Saving ourselves a fight, bringing our troops back home, gaining us two territories in England, two territories in England, and taking a bunch of money from them, which is quite helpful. We only got about six hundred of that money because we split it between our allies, but even so, it's pretty good. So now we got our two territories here, Essex, which is a 14 province, and we're going to core that, and then London, which is 11 province, and we're going to core that as well. Uh, we do have 4.53 war exhaustion. I probably should have uh, bought that down at the time, um, but I want to also save the um, Diplo uh, points I have because I'm behind in Diplotech, and paying a little bit extra in admin to save some Diplo might be worth it. Uh, so we can look to uh, piecing out Danzig now and getting rid of this... Um, um, this war exhaustion ticker and I look to possibly taking the city myself um, decide that maybe I just don't need this land it's going to cut a lot of stuff so we'll just get uh, money and war reps instead but I need a uh, person free so we'll do that and end the call for peace bringing us to peace once again so now we can look, take a look at Wessex and see if we can vassalize them and um they don't like me anymore, and I'm shocked. And the reason they don't like me anymore is because of my aggressive expansion. And they want my provinces, Middlesex Hall and what's ours. So I get a little annoyed at Wessex at, at, uh, at being kind of punky in this situation, but um, we'll either slowly, sweetly convince them to join us, or I'll just walk over there and beat the crap out of them. I think in the end I decide to uh, ally with them and uh, just wait for the timer to tick down on the war exhaustion. It ticks down fairly quickly and they don't have tons and tons of it, just enough that it makes it too difficult to vassalize them right at the moment. Pick another uh, uh, another um, rival. Of course we're gonna pick Francia. Yeah, they just rivaled me. That makes sense. We're the two biggest powers in Western Europe. Uh, might as well rival each other. In fact, I think the two of us are probably the biggest powers in all of Europe. Um, although Bohemia and the Magyars are also kind of large. So we'll send uh, some of our armies up north to deal with these rebels. Uh, in particular, I have to deal with the rebels in the UK, as well as uh, dealing with rebels in the north. I pay up all my loans but one, which is wonderful. Uh, we just need one more loan to go. I'm making 14 ducats a month, which is great. That'll really help pay off these loans fairly quickly. Got a revolt in Jorvik. We have two revolts now in the UK, which is unfortunate. Uh, my fleets have been docked in uh, Western Yarland there, um, so I'll try and probably move over one of my armies to help take out the English rebels, and I'll send my uh, I'll send my um, mercenaries north to take out the Norwegian rebels. Finland would like to marry me? Absolutely. Finland's been quite a good ally, uh, a little uh, vassal as well. Uh, so now I'm debating taking this tech, and I'm like, well, how far away from embracing institution? We do have a decent amount of the institution uh, spread in our territory. Most of uh, Den Danish Denmark has been converted to for, I think, two territories, Finn and the other half of the uh, the main island of Schneeland. I think that's how you say that word. But possibly that one territory there, uh, just about Slesvig, is also, yeah, it's Danish as well. Uh, they need to get converted to... I think it was Finn that needed me. It was Lolland, one of those two island uh, provinces. So 
let's just decide to wait for a minute and we'll see what we can do. So we'll take this uh, stack of 20 to come blow up these people in Jorvik. We'll take back Hull first, then we'll head up to, um, I think we just walk right over and beat them from there. I've never been to Hull, it's a lovely city, a nice old gate. Uh, I know it's a bit of a bad rap for being an industrial city, but I've been there once and it's quite nice. And not too far from York, uh, which is also a beautiful city to visit. So let's head up and take back Newcastle um, and reclaim our English territories. We'll split off all of our lights again so we can go back to protecting trade in the uh, Lubeck node. Uh, for a minute there, I forget where that is. Here we go. Back in Lubeck. Let's make that money again and show ourselves as to be the strongest trading power. Now our uh, mercenary group, I don't notice it yet, are just sitting there um, not doing anything in uh, Denmark, no, in Norway, after taking back the one rebel territory. And the rebels do move around a bit and take some more territory. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of all the armies and things floating around. So this is me increasing the... Um, provinces in this territory to be uh, 15 to complete that one um, tech. So I get um, Norfolk and uh, I think that was uh, Lincolnshire or Leicester maybe. can't remember what it's called there. Um, I think that's Lincolnshire. And I looked at other ones that I can get. So Jorvik is already there and a couple others are. And then I can decide that both um, London and Essex here. Um, I think London is called Middlesex in this one. Uh, the province is called that. Uh, we'll bump them both up to 15 as well, but I can't do that until the uh, core is finished, because you can't develop a non-core province. Somebody would like to trade uh, favors. I don't particularly, I'm not particularly interesting. Let's see if there's any mead halls I can build. There's 116 or 0.16. Uh, which seems like well worth the investment, especially this early in the game. Uh, then we'll look to getting other things done. We have some lazy diplomats. Let's get our allies um, nice and sucked up to to make sure they're nice and happy. Um, let's see if anybody else wants to be my vassal. Wessex does. Other than that, it's pretty much all just... Um, it's all North American uh, indigenous groups or nations that want to join us. We still have that one slot. I'm not quite sure what to do with it. It will probably be Wessex that I slot into there um, as another vassal. So we'll make that alliance with Wessex because we do have the capacity to take them on. They're hostile to me at the moment. That'll change uh, once they get happier with me. I think that's uh, at 50 or possibly 100 that hostility will go away for sure, but they can also change their stance between now and then um, as well. I think one of my alliances is breaking. It's probably the one with Wessex. But that went away again, probably because they changed their um, stance. So profiteering, we just decide to go with the local unrest in that particular situation. Um, our mercenaries are taking down the Norwegian rebels, and we'll clean up that Norwegian air territory with them and our other main stack will take back uh, Newcastle here and we'll reclaim our English territories. In the meantime, we need to decide what we're going to do next. So Novgorod over here um, definitely needs to be taken out. Uh, they, we have a truce with them until next year. Uh, so that's coming up soon. So we'll start moving our troops that direction because they have two territories that I need to take over there. We're also going to check uh, the new world for Anybody else who's uh, decided to colonize here right now, I think it's just me and one Andalusian state, that one there, which is troublesome. Um, so we'll work on that, but nobody else in North America has been able to colonize yet, probably because I've disrupted all the colonizers like England. Um, and I'm not sure if Francia actually does colonization. They might. So it might just be Andalusia and I fighting over the Caribbean, and for the Caribbean thing, I need a whole bunch of states to get that done. So if I go down to the bottom here, it's me looking at those economic ones. If I go down here, I can see that I need the Dots, um, Vestendien, I need uh, 10 provinces in the Caribbean owned by me, and then it will give me global tariffs and an advisor. 
So we've got one now. And we've got to go down the Gold Coast and get three. And then the uh, American uh, Coast will need ten, the East Coast. So we have two in the East Coast now, and one in the Caribbean, and none in Africa, in North Africa there. So I have to work on getting those. It'd be really helpful if I had another colonist. So we'll start working towards that. It's one reason why I chose the idea group I did, because it will bring me towards uh, that particular thing. Now we're talking about the diet here. I really want to start getting rid of a couple of these so they can lower their influence levels so I don't have to worry about um, um, them moving into a crisis if they get over 100%. Uh, but right now, uh, we just there's no way for me to get uh, the um, approval over the influence, which is how you get rid of the, the you can revoke some of the stuff that way. Uh, but I need to find a way to, to do that, and we'll work towards it. So hopefully um, Newcastle here falls in this tick, and it does, perfect. So we'll take back the other territories here. We'll get Newcastle up to uh, where it needs to be. Get some base production or base tax in this province. Let's take a look at the province, because it's always good to see what's there. Production is really only useful if you've got a good goods. Naval supplies are sort of a mid-tier goods. So you don't really need to do that. So the base tax instead. Later on in the game, going for production is probably more um, beneficial. But early on in the game, um, income uh, tax. So the tax is uh, really what gets you there. So we have uh, at least five. Um, I'm trying to figure out this particular one uh, because we need uh, five provinces with fish, five with green, and five with livestock that are not in Danish, and they each need to be um, at least development of ten. And that's where I get a little confused here until I read that line of development 10. Because uh, I'm like, surely we have at least five fish things now. Look at how much coast we have. And then I go around exploring and uh, we figure that out pretty quick. So we look around these provinces here. Let's take a look at our fish provinces. So I'm like, yeah, there's certainly fish up here. Yeah, indeed there are. There's fish there, uh, not Nidoros, but there's fish there. And fish there. There's a bunch of other fish along here as well. There's more there in the uh, best fold and so on. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to increase the uh, the development to 10, right? It helps if I read the whole uh, mission to figure things out. So with that in mind, I'm going to go take a look at all the different uh, trade goods and see where we are and how far are off we are and what we can do for the various things. I uh, forgot that the trade goods are not in the little quick menu there. I gotta go in the economic one and click on trade goods, and then I can click on the individual ones. So we start with fish. Uh, you can see it's all over my empire. I got a bunch in Sweden. Uh, I've got a bunch in Norway. Um, it's just all a matter of getting ones that are level five. Most of these are 10, I should say. Most of these are not, which is unfortunate. Um, but a few of them are pretty close or already there. That one is in Agershus. Um, Vestafold is not too far, neither is Christiania. Um, the rest of these are a little far away, especially like Finnmark and stuff, because they're at three and four. We go over to England. Um, I can't take any in Denmark. In England, there's a couple here, like London, for instance, uh, is one. The Isle of Man is only about the three provinces, not useful. Um, all of um, Iceland is fish, but Iceland is all just one one ones across the board. Not a very useful thing. These provinces aren't mine. They belong to uh, Gaeldom, but they are Norse and Norwegian. I mean, I said they're Norwegian, not Norse. They've been converted to Catholic, uh, so they shouldn't be under our banner. This is where I'm looking at provinces that I need to bump up to at least 10. So I get uh, this one here going up to 10. Festival, so that is another one, and then this one here in um, um, Bahuslen. I'm not quite sure how to say that one, uh, but in the sort of the southern part of the Norwegian lands there. And I take a look at the Swedish territories, and I notice that they're all pretty low uh, tech. And then I notice, oh, Hamburg. That's it. That would have been a good one to take. This is level 23 uh, development province um, with fish. But then I notice Middlesex is also there and it's already up, so I'm already pretty close now. I'm at least three or four 
our fish, so I only need like one more to get done. We'll figure that is. And there's a bunch of fish in Scotland we can take on, but again, it's not really high development land. Most of Scandinavia and the British Isles is not particularly high development. Um, and Novgorod's area is not either, which is unfortunate. I do investigate some of the uh, Eastern Baltic here, but again, all low development. And I'm like, oh, Ireland. Yes, yes, Ireland. You've got some 10s here, over here, a 10 and 11, or an 11 and 12 even. Interesting. Maybe we can take out some Irish territory. That would be nice. And it can be a vassal, I believe. It doesn't have to be me, which is good. I take a look at the New World. No real fish. There's a little bit of fish up in the north. But I also need grain, and there's some grain in the New World, which would be very useful. Uh, so I consider that uh, briefly. Um, no fish in the Caribbean, at least that I can see, although there's a bunch of question marks that need to be discovered. Uh, most of this is not. Now, I do notice that this 16 province, owned by a indigenous tribe, definitely can be taken. Um, so we'll probably end up taking that one ourselves at some point. So looking back at uh, Europe again, considering grain as we're moving around, I think now, and what we can do to complete this mission. Um, a big part of it will be taking out Ireland, I think. And I sort of come to that conclusion about the fish part of it, because they've got those provinces. And I'm like, well, what else do they have here? Uh, none of the Norse has survived in this area, which is unfortunate. Um, it's just us, and we're slowly converting this uh, last bit of territory over. It's just the three there in the uh, Norfolk and the two the new ones we just took, uh, Middlesex and Essex. As you can see, the Norse is spreading fairly well across uh, Northern Europe here. It would be nice to convert a few more um, groups over. Finland is very uh, loyal to me, so I enforce their religion because they haven't converted any of the lands and they are uh, not Norse. So I would like that to change so they can do the conversions for me. Although eventually my uh, missionaries will lose things to do in my territory, won't have anything left, and they'll start moving over there. So we go back to looking at trade goods, and we consider livestock. So Denmark has got a lot of livestock, but then I realize, you know, southern Denmark is not Danish, so Holstein is not Danish, and they got six. So I can make Holstein one. And Schleswig is not Danish, and they've got 13, so they're already there. So that's two in the south here we already have, plus Sweden's got a couple, as you can see there on the map. And if we go over to England, uh, there's, there's a whole bunch in Wales um, that aren't quite up to snuff. Uh, and there's a few in Scotland, Oxford's got one, which would be useful as to southern uh, uh, Dorset there in southern England. But then if you take a look at Ireland, it's just full of cows. It's full of livestock. So I figure, oh. Well, why don't we take this stuff out? Oh, Gaeldom owns all of this. Gaeldom doesn't have good allies. Gaeldom isn't all that strong. And we can take things like Ulster and release Ulster. Uh, maybe not Desmond, uh, but maybe Thormund here would be a good one to release. Uh, Waterford is only a single thing, so probably not them. And then Leicester, uh, probably not either. I think that's Leicester is how you say that. And then Connaught would be a good one as well for all of uh, sort of central west. Um, Ireland, so Connaught and Ulster and Thormond would be good because it would cover basically three quarters of the island in three vassals, and then we can just absorb them. And thankfully, Thormond covers both of the fish very nicely, so it'd be a good one to grab. Uh, Munster is just that one uh, province at the end there, so we don't do that. Or Munster, I should say. Munster is in um, uh, Germany. Munster is in Ireland. Uh, then, I, of course, I come to the conclusion that we need to take Ireland, so we shall do so. Um, again, I discover that they do have lots of grain as well to help me out. A little bit of grain in Scotland, but again, it's a three and a three and a six. Not super useful. Six, maybe. Uh, but the one down there in um, Sussex would be helpful as well. And, of course, uh, Dithmarten has... Uh, grain and we just got to improve that a couple of times to get up there and sweden has a bit of grain around including stockholm which is helpful and uh, torku in uh, finland also has it so 
maybe at some point we can get uh, grain done as well. So I think we're on the cusp of getting that one economic mission done, but it's gonna, I think, revolve around getting um, some territory um, in Ireland and take it away from Gaeldom. But first, as I mentioned in the video, original recording, I'm going to go to war with Novgorod for two territories to finish off the uh, Uh, that particular part of the thing. If we do that uh, mission and we move down to the Baltic trade hegemon where we need uh, more trade stuff, we can do the Pearl of Baltics uh, where we, um, no province in Scandinavia, the Baltics, Wendia or North Germany has more development than Kuvenhaven, so we just increase the development of our capital and uh, we become uh, the super city. Uh, I'll hover over the bonuses in a second here. That's Kuvenhaven. Thank you for putting that out. There we go. We gain 100 uh, prosperity and a bunch of other stuff, cool stuff, uh, making Kuvenhaven uh, 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 an important part of northern trade. But Unite Scandinavia is the thing I need. If we do that, we get discipline, um, as well as our leader gets uh, an extra military uh, pip, which I think is really cool. We only need two provinces from Novgorod, so it's not such a big deal. I'll probably feed one of them to Finland, and the other one I'll take myself. Not such a big deal. Now control of Scotland is on the agenda, as is defeat the Britons. So defeating the Britons is that Welsh area and the Cornwall area, Cornwall, Cornwaller, Cornwallis, I don't know what you would call them, Cornwaller area. Um, yeah, so we get that done. I did notice that uh, my um, fort was not taking back the two territories in Northern England there, so I split my army to take them on. I consider a war with um, Mercia here. Francia will defend them because they're a member of the Empire, so that's a too big a battle for me to take on. I consider war with my ally. Um, probably not. What about Gaeldom here? Gaeldom is not particularly strong. I could bring in Valetti. I can bring in Wessex. I could probably take them on, but I still decide that maybe going um, east first is uh, ben more beneficial, and then we'll come back for Gaeldom. Once some of my AE uh, comes off, but Gaeldom's only got Brabant, which is this little province over here, which I'll find in just a second. It's that sort of light green one, like that sea foam, 1950s, 1960s green. Um, and then of course Lothringia, and Lothringia is also very small, it's only got 27k troops. Uh, so I'm not particularly worried about them either. And I do have a mission for Calais, which is really interesting. I must have picked that up from my mission tree uh, to have a claim on Calais. Uh, so it'd be neat to grab that as well at some point, but um, that's probably later down the road because it does border Francia and Francia probably desires it. So I don't want to cause more reasons for Francia to declare war on me right away until I'm ready to take them on and really dismantle them. The last war really sort of got me thinking that we're not quite powerful enough to take on the big boy. We're sort of like second dog, maybe third dog in the uh, European conflict right now. Uh, so we need to, because uh, Andalusia is pretty powerful too. Uh, so we need to take a step back and rebuild and get strong uh, to be able to take all the, uh, the big guys on. So we're just talking about uh, Denmark here. Remember I said I completely forgot about my um, mercenaries cleaning up the rebels. I did, so now they're going to head over there and finish up that territory. Um, the English uh, rebels have been solved, and so they'll head back. We do have some rebels brewing in East Anglia um, and Essex, uh, but they're pretty low right now. East Anglia is at 50%, but it's not too bad. So let's move my uh, army up here to the edge of Novgorod to prepare to take them on. They are only allied with Kiev, Rostov, and Nizhny Novgorod. Um, so Rostov is pretty small. Nizhny Novgorod is pretty, is a sort of medium sized. Kiev, larger, but probably worth easily taking on. Um, I consider seizing land right now. Everybody does kind of like me. I could do a diet. This is where I think that if I call a diet, it will bump up over. But what happens is they get both influence and happiness when you do that. So it balances out. So I ended up just giving them more power. Only if I do the mission for the nobility uh, will um, that go up uh, more. That I might be able to so, so gain 10 loyalty, that'll go over 92, and then I can start taking stuff away from them. 
although I think I end up taking this mission to uh, make Lenape a uh, tributary, or not a tributary state, a vassal. Um, and Lenape is over in the New World. Uh, I think I go check out where they are right now. Yep. Uh, first, I check on this thing where I'm like, I need to take this territory because it's important. I don't have a mission to take it. Um, I decide that making friends with uh, people I don't care about is not worth it. So I'm going to build a spy network on this one because that's a, I believe it was a grain territory with a 16 development, well worth taking. And it's in the Caribbean, which I need to get more anyhow. And then Lenape, I need to look up over here. Um, I try to figure out where they are. I should have a claim on them somewhere. And then I figure it out uh, by clicking on the thing and going to the province. And it turns out it's just north of my uh, second colony there for sure. Not too hard to take on. So my big fleet is just sitting here in the ocean, not doing much. Uh, they're not damaged either, which is fine. So we're going to grab our troops, uh, bring them together. And I consider sending a 10 stack over to New World, which I think should be sufficient to take out Lenape in this situation. Um, and so I'm like, well, let's uh, peel off like a 10 stack of cogs or so. We can just take them over. Perfect. Stick them on the, the bay here. We'll grab them there. Stick you on the boat and send you over to the New World. And then we'll do Lenape. There we go. We'll add in Nintendo. Which is not Nintendo. And then we'll move this other uh, stack over to Scarborough to uh, get picked up by the remainder of the fleet. Have them pop into port pick them up and take them over to the uh, Novgorodian border. So I'm not particularly afraid of Novgorod, who I don't think is a strong army. Some of their, va their vassals, some of their allies are um, a little scary, but not crazy scary in any sort of way. So that's uh, basically the end of uh, this episode here. Um, we're going to take out uh, Novgorod in the next episode. We're going to do, take out Lenape and subjugate them for the bonus, uh, and then be able to take some privileges away from the nobility to knock them down. Hopefully we can do the same for the other two at some point. Um, bring that down so we Lenape and Novgorod in uh, the next episode. Uh, the two territories we want are uh, Korye here, which we will feed to Finland, and uh, Kola in the north, which I'll just take myself. And I may take something else, uh, like some of the Karelian lands, uh, and give them to Finland, because I think Karelian and uh, Finnish are um, of the same culture group, if I remember correctly. They're not part of my culture group, uh, but they may be of the Finnish culture group. I'm not 100% sure. And I think maybe if we form Scandinavia, Karelia might become under our particular culture group. Yeah, I'm saying here that uh, we need to get Norwegian into us as a promoted culture. But I just don't have the space for it with England and Swedish there. Um, Norwegian is technically bigger than both of those, so I should probably have it in. But at this point, I just don't have it. But anyhow, that takes us to basically the end of this episode. So if you're enjoying the series so far, please like and subscribe. Um, we're going to continue to expand in England. We're going to expand in Ireland. Um, Got some stuff going on here. I have no idea what we're talking about here. Probably building up those provinces once they're cored. 